this video, let's talk specifically on labeling of section view. And it can be quite a challenge to get section views the way you want them, and it's a little bit cumbersome. So when you generated your sections and your section views, you chose a code set for a corridor and styles for your surfaces. And this corridor that I have displayed here is set to a code set style of cross sections, PDG cross sections. You remember setting under settings, general multi purpose code sets, you're able to see your code sets. Your code sets have definitions of what points to label. So if I go to this code set, and I, we're going to focus on points, you will see here the codes that I have set to label. And only these codes to label. Okay. Now, these should have labeled when I generated the section views. This is a known issue and bug, and it's been around for years. And sometimes they just don't display, which is a perfect segue into a tool that we're, or a command that we're going to use often. It's going to be hard for you to remember, so you might want to write this down or make you a quick button for it. But it is a command called corridor. You'll start typing corridor. Section, labels, convert. Okay. So it, in my case, none of my labels are showing up, and I want to see my code set labels. So we're going to run this command. And it wants you to select all of the views that you want to run the tool on. In my case, all of them. And I'm going to hit enter. And now you can choose whether to do code set styles or corridor point styles. We're going to focus on code set styles for the moment, just so I can get them on. So now those labels that are turned on in my code set are labeled. It shows the telltale issue of having overlapping labels. Notice that when I try to select a label, it selects the entire corridor. You see that? I have, if I select a label, I am brought into my contextual ribbon for my sections and section views. So I have very limited ability to manipulate these labels. These are code set labels. You have another way of labeling section views. When you generate your sections, so if I select this and I go to my section view group, if you can remember when you generate your sections, there is a column for label sets, which is a totally different thing that we'll get into in just a second. But before we dig into that, remember here is your code sets, and up here are your marker styles for your individual markers for your points and your feature lines. Down here are your label styles associated with code sets. So if I go to marker, you'll see here those that view style that I had, or label style. And in the label styles, the only thing that is controlled are the contents of the label and the lines. So whatever contents that you have or you want to label for each individual point or style that you have and any line work that you have with it. That's the same for all the labels we're going to be talking about. Now that we've got this and we've said these are overlapping, this is a small project. There's only a couple thousand feet in this, but if you had a really long one and hundreds and hundreds of sections, this could be a problem quickly. So there's a better way. And we're going to use those corridor style label styles. So let's select it. And let's change this to this style right here. Watch what happens. Now I have both, which makes it even worse. So I do that deliberately so you can see that if you're wanting to switch, do not do what I just did. Sometimes it works, sometimes it won't. It is just easier to run the command. So let's do the corridor, section labels, convert again, select all our views. Hit enter, and I'm going to change it to the corridor point style so that you can see what happens. I'm going to choose a style and hit OK. <clears throat> now we've got labels, and they're much cleaner. 
And when I select a label, notice it is a label. I got a totally different contextual ribbon. I have the ability to move each one to a different drag state, and so forth and so on. Much more ability to play with it. There is still some limited stuff. So that drag state for this label set is not set up perfect. It flipped it horizontal and it still keeps the tail. But things like that, you can manipulate with your styles. And this is much better. Some people might not like this straight arrow or just not being vertical, but you can't have your cake and eat it too, as they say. So you've got to move something over in order for them not to be overlapping. Now, this dial is handled in a completely different place. Remember that this is a corridor point style versus a code set point style. If you go to your settings, you go to sections, you will see two things, and under labels, you will see two things that are of important. All of these are the labels, styles for each of these types, and then sets take all of those labels and bring them together. So if I go to corridor points and I look here, at this, this is exactly like our other style. This is handling nothing but the contents of the label. So our offset and our elevation and our line, okay? And the height of our text and so forth. The contents of the label is handled by this style. The set is where you can combine any of these you want. So if I go to this staggered labels, and I go to labels, we were wanting to label corridor points. And now we chose that style that we were just looking at right here. You're able to choose your distance, your anchor, and so forth. And most importantly, over here, you're able to turn on your staggered labels. We'll choose both sides, and then you can play with the lengths of the offset left and right and the lengths of those lines and save it as a section label set. So when we switch back and forth, we were going between code set labels and section label sets. So as a matter of practice, uh, depending on the complexity, I like to label my links with my code set style, leave it alone and not override it. And then I'll handle points typically with the corridor set style and override it. Now, because I didn't have a um, link, label in my label set style it did not override these so you're essentially overriding them and there's an override option here i mean it gets even more convoluted so you can turn on overrides and choose a whole different set if you wanted to i'm overriding the code set style so if i had ran main corridor with a different code set and then I wanted to use a, a separate one for labeling purposes or section purposes, I could. But maybe I had run the corridor under the um, assembly code set, but in my section views, I wanted to use my cross-section set. Here's where you would override it. It doesn't really affect these lab this labeling issue, but um, that's if you uh, get to where it's just things aren't labeling that should be, that is more than likely why, because it's not got the associate code set. It will still only label the points that were in the code set. So you're basically overriding labels is what's happening when you switch. You're overriding the code set label for a corridor or a section label set. Is that confusing and convoluted enough? So the things to take away is the corridor section label conversion tool, which is the most important part of this video, and making sure you can understand the difference between code set label styles and section view label styles. And I'm able to switch back and forth just that quick. I just moved it back to the other one. So maybe if I was looking, said for some reason my EP wasn't labeling, and here, I know, oh crap, I don't have it set right in my code set. I could go edit my code set, refresh, and voila, it'd be here. And then I can convert it to my offset or my corridor. That gives me much more ability to manipulate these as I want. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll go through and start creating some 
sheets of sections. If you like this content, please click like and feel free to subscribe.